please don't shoot the messenger. But the message is important. On this cartoon, you see a company announcing a very promising new product for the Asian market. However, not everybody was involved and the regulatory affairs director is wondering how to get this message across. Because notification is required and that might take some time. He considered several scenarios and respective emotions. The best scenario, of course, would have been that he would have involved all relevant stakeholders, like the regulatory affairs department, for instance, from the initial start of the product development. Therefore, awareness on key regulatory changes is needed throughout the company, starting with the top. Today's interview is about how to involve your top management in relation to the business impact of key regulations. What better way than to discuss this with two top managers from compliance-driven companies, Crane G and Mark Hurrich. Crane, from your point of view, who are the stakeholders that should be engaged? Yeah, of course, first should be the regular affair team, actually that got the information, and then definitely is a high management team that need to consider the impact and they need to analyze and also that uh, will involve the other teams like the commercial, like the purchasing, like uh, the, the, other de the other department, uh, I think maybe mostly like the marketing team and uh, like the, this kind of uh, supporting team, even the customer service uh, group. Mark, do you identify other stakeholders than Crane mentioned? You know, the stakeholder groups are driven by the type of business, the type of product, um, and sort of the type of circumstances and the fact pattern that's associated with what you're trying to accomplish. Um, and so, yes, we involve sourcing, product engineering, technology, new product introduction, um, uh, you know, engineering, quality systems, quality technical regulatory standards, mm -hmm. uh, lots of different organizations have to be brought to bear. It's not optional, but it has to be brought to bear um, as a cross-functional group of stakeholders to be successful at doing this work. For, for you at GE, eh, you have an organizational structure, of course, that supports stakeholder interaction. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah, we do. We have uh, a number of different operating uh, mechanisms inside the company that um, create an environment for these different stakeholder groups that, that Crane and I have been talking about mm -hmm. to come together to work on the shared need. Those folks that are within that structure that have a role and a responsibility to address the need, they are brought to bear um, into the process. And Huntsman, a similar kind of structure? Yeah, we have an uh, organization called the Product Stewardship Cross-Functional Team. Actually, mm -hmm. it is just uh, like Max said, it almost uh, cooperate at different department. Every, every department will have uh, one or maybe several people sitting in the team and we will discuss on this kind of regular update regularly. When you are informing your key stakeholders, uh, what are the important terms that you use uh, during these meetings? Yeah, usually we are talking about the regulatory compliance. Actually, just this, uh, this word of compliance or maybe sometimes we use ethics. The term compliance is um, culturally embedded into how people think and how they act and what they do. So it's sort of a, a baseline assumption uh, for everybody working on these things. Um, terms that we generally try to focus on, yes of course there's cost always associated with these things um, uh, to varying degrees, but you know, what's the value proposition um, to the business? to our stakeholders. Who are the stakeholders that, that get a value out of this? Mm -hmm. There are internal stakeholders, there are external stakeholders. Mm -hmm. Government can be a stakeholder. The markets and customers can be stakeholders. So it really comes down to, from my experience, the, the, the best success is framing the value proposition um, and using terms around value proposition to drive the need. And the receivers of these messages, do they prefer black and white or more detailed? My experience is, especially when we're talking about management level communications, that the simpler the better. Um, and framing, framing the communication in the language that, that they understand. Um, because legalese and compliance language, not necessarily the best way to communicate 
to management on um, sort of what, what's at hand for the moment. Crane, many companies, they talk about corporate responsibility. Mm -hmm. What is currently your expectation of the majority of companies? Uh, do they want to be top of class or is good reasonable enough? I have to say that in Huntsman, we, we really look at this kind of compliance things in, in a very high level, or, or maybe like you said, the, the high class of this uh, uh, situation. And uh, based on my own experience that uh, uh, actually the, the value from Huntsman is much more look at the, in the ethics and the compliance situation. So every time when we start the communication with uh, the high management or maybe even with uh, these different uh, departments, so, uh, they, they understand, understand the situation and understand the importance of uh, the regulatory and to be compliant to the regulatory. Anything to add on this? Running a company or running business, um, particularly in, in the spaces that we work yeah. where we're making products for uh, a benefit or a value to society, we of course w always want those to be top of class. The, the basic principles that I try to um, advance is we just got to do the right thing. Just you know, you do the right thing for the right reasons with the right people um, on the right mission um, to get the right output. And, and the output is for the various stakeholders, including customers, but it's not just customers. It, it depends on the situation. But, but all of that is you're just doing the right thing. At what stage, Crane, do you inform your stakeholders and decision makers of the potential changes in certain legislation? Yeah, actually, uh, we will start at the very beginning. And we will continuously talking with uh, the stakeholders in different meetings. We keep them aware, and uh, we will update them regularly, especially when that when, when that milestone coming. Mark, <laughs> is the um, uh, the stage where you inform your decision makers uh, about an impact also the moment where the responsibility accountability shifts to them, or do you, as messenger, uh, retain <laughs> ownership uh, of uh, and accountability of it? We, we try to function with the need here as a shared responsibility. Um, and the facts will drive, of, of the need, the facts of the need will drive who's going to own what, for what reason, and when. And what I mean by that is there certainly will be fact patterns that um, once they are uh, operationalized or integrated into the business, it may be entirely the business taking ownership of it. And I back away. There may be other circumstances where I have to be involved at some certain level or other circumstances where I still own it completely um, to make sure that it happens. What are your suggestions to create the right environment in a company for joint responsibility, a shared mindset on regulatory compliance? Yeah, actually, uh, from my point of view, I have to say maybe the leader of the company is quite important. Actually, mm -hmm. in enhancement, my feeling is that the, the whole atmosphere of compliance is quite uh, driven by the Huntsman family. That, that they are talking about them. I, I think uh, it is written in the mission, in the value of the company. Based on your experience, do you see cultural differences um, that you should take into account in involving the top management mm -hmm. or the stakeholders? Yeah, actually, from my point uh, of view, or from my experience, uh, I did not see big difference between the different country. And this is maybe also because of the culture of consumer, because everyone is talking about that. So it uh, some, somehow make my life mm -hmm. a little bit easier. Yeah, and no, I, I completely agree with Crane. I think um, it's important always to be mindful of mm -hmm. the differences but the differences are opportunities. You also learn that there are many, many people out there with great ideas yeah. from their perspectives and from where they came from in cultures that you would not otherwise get. Gentlemen, thank you very much for your clear perceptions. Uh, for those of you uh, in a messenger function who also need some examples how to convey the message, I would recommend watching Rowan Atkinson's performance of The Messenger. I don't know if you have seen it, but mm. he uh, takes the role of messenger that has to come with good news and bad news mm -hmm. to the king. And the best one, I think, is The Messenger with uh, 
bad news who thinks it is good news.